Good morning, everyone. Raise your hands if you feel you're a reasonably happy person. Hey, we have a bunch of happy campers here. If you're happy or unhappy, this presentation is for you. It is about happiness and how it's available to everyone and anyone who chooses it. You could see how happy I am there with my family. And in the third chapter of my life, my main goal is to help people to be happy. In the process, I too learn how to be happy and how to stay happy. My dream is to be able to spread this message like a potent virus. And I really would like to infect all of you by the end of the day with the happiness virus. And my presentation, the recipe that I have for happiness is that, first of all, I'm going to discuss a non-traditional and an Eastern way of being happy. Then I will highlight for you the number one reason that made people who live alone happy. I will also review the uh, findings on happiness and the brain, and finally leave you with a uh, takeaway, final message. I was obsessed with the question of happiness, even as a young child. I've always asked, what is happiness? What will make me happy? What, how can I be happy all the time? And I thought that maybe capping the highest honor in college would help me do that. But my search for power, money, wealth, beauty, they all failed miserably. The awakening didn't come until my husband died at an early age. And it was that, that, that time that I started my long journey towards wholeness, personal growth, and eventually happiness. Now, how do you navigate the ups and downs of life? When you're happy or up, it's pretty easy to be happy. When you're down and life is full of nothing, how do you navigate that? Uh, I can't. How do you navigate that when life is down? Ma is a Japanese word that can be roughly translated as fall of nothing. In English, the translation is empty. It is predominant in Japanese art, in music, and in conversation, and in culture. In art, it is that negative space. It is that structural space between two parts. As you can see in this image, it is the chalice on the left, and it is on the right. It is another chalice, but there's also in the background various two profiles. So it is not full of nothing. It's not empty. And in um, art and music, it is that pause that gives the musical notes its substance. In Japanese conversation, it's that silence that allows the speaker and the receiver to reflect on what was said, which is foreign to us Westerners. It is useful and can be transformative to apply the concept of ma to life's transition. Any one of you have gone through a life transition like losing a loved one, moving to another job, divorce, separation. You have all experienced that disruptive feeling of confusion, anxiety, and disorientation. Uh, also, the uh, author, William Bridges, calls this descent the neutral zone. It is a time of uh, confusion. Although it feels unproductive, there's actually growth happening underneath. It's much like the darkness and the lack of activity during the dead of winter. Nothing is growing, but there is growth, invisible growth, that's coming underground that could blossom into a bright and really actually vibrant spring. I experienced this disorientation, the dark, gaping hole when my husband died. It wasn't until later that I broke down because I had to remain strong. I had to remain focused to be able to help raise my sons and help them 
to crawl out of their grief. It wasn't until later that I broke down physically and emotionally. When I started to face the dark shadow that's lurking underneath me, when I started to face the reality that my husband was dead, there's absolutely nothing I could do about it. When I accepted that reality, then I went on my long journey towards healing. Acceptance was the key. Embracing that fear, accepting the darkness that disrupted, disrupted the cycle of suffering and sorrow. And it was at that time that began to really embrace the emptiness. I learned from it, and I came out stronger and wiser. I can say with conviction that I wouldn't be the person that I am today if I had, hadn't gone through that time when I plowed through the neutral zone, took off from ordinary life, and finally embraced the exquisite and the empowering fullness of nothing. The death experience allowed me, it allowed me to be stronger and wiser and to appreciate the gift of life with greater clarity, openness, and gratitude. Eventually, it helped me to be able to help raise my sons and lead a happier and a fuller life. Now that I am single, how do I live a happy solo life? The answer is solo power. I did a research in 2006 and 2007, and a majority of the respondents, about 70% of them, indicated that the number one source of their happiness is the strong and resilient relationships that they have with their families, their friends, their God, their community, and sometimes even their pets, my family, my source of strength, and my source of joy. It offers a protective armor against the tragedies and the challenges of life, and also offered me a nurturing and a supportive environment where they listen to my successes and they listen to my joys and my sorrows. So it's a place to, that's nurturing for me. It's a strong bond for me to have the family, and that's also what the um, uh, respondents indicated to me. It's all about connections, the connections that I have with some of you in the audience, my friends, my peers. And the second idea that I'd like to share with you relates to the relationship between happiness and the brain. And uh, first, I have to make a distinction between emotions and feelings. Emotions are automatic and not amenable to control. They're reflexive. Whereas feelings are amenable to control. They are conscious. So if I trace the pathway of the emotion of anger from the back of the brain, which is the cerebellum, to the midbrain, which is the brain stem, that emotion of anger, I still cannot control that. But once I process that emotion, of anger through the front of the brain, which is your cerebrum, the rational brain, I can turn it on and off. It becomes conscious. So your on and off switch is in front of you. Can you feel it? So, for example, when I hit a traffic jam on my way, my hour commute to the city of Wilmington, I can curse my merry way and react with anger, frustration, and annoyance, and curse my way to Highway 13 like a maniacal and aggressive driver. Or I can calmly turn on the beautiful music of Esteban and listen to his calming sounds, plan my day, problem solve, and maybe even be creative. So I can spin that negative emotion into a positive feeling. And according to uh, Dr. Stefan Klein, who did a research on the relationship between the brain and happiness, that it's not enough 
to be happy. You have to be aware of that happiness. He said that satisfaction or happiness is like a mosaic that you see there. It is made up of many happy moments. And those happy moments, when you remember them, becomes a lifestyle of happiness. It's a lifestyle of happiness. So the two ideas I'd like you to remember when it comes to the brain is that number one, you have to be aware of it. You see me doing my happiness dance? You have to be aware of it. And why is that? You have to be aware of it so you can remember it. When you remember it, recall it, you savor it for a longer period of time. You can restore that original sense of joy you experienced the first time. Remember your first kiss, your first love. And the next area is that remember that you have the power within you. Remember the switch? And happiness is available to all. You can focus on face happiness for the moment, in this present moment. And you could look at the future with optimism and look at the past with satisfaction. So that power is within all of you, within all of us. When I am down and lonely, I think of my dad, who would be humming the Brahms lullaby as he would put me to sleep, and I would pretend and linger so that I could feel his warm embrace for a longer period of time. Now, I'd like you to close your eyes. Recall the happiest moments of your life. Savor them. Savor them. Make it last for a longer period of time. Feel that visceral sense of joy flowing through your veins. Restore that sense of happiness that you experienced the first time. Happiness is that elegant fusion between the mind and the heart. Be happy, stay happy, at least for the rest of today. <laughs> Thank you.